Hello students, I'm Dr. Seema Singh and you're watching my channel Bonding with Chemistry. In today's video, I'll take up the third part of a four-part series on the topic Chemical Properties of Acids and Bases. Here I will explain how acids and bases react with each other, that is the neutralization reaction. These are the list of topics that I've already covered in my previous videos. In case you missed any of these, you can always go back to them by clicking the links provided in the description box below. I would take up the fourth part of this series in my next video. Before we begin with what are neutralization reaction, let us first recall some important points from my previous videos that would help you understand the current topic easily. We have studied that arginase acids are substances that furnish hydrogen ions or hydronium ions when dissolved in water. Whereas bases according to arginase theory are substances that give hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. For more details, you can refer to the link provided on top. I've also explained you that acids and bases are chemically opposite of each other. That is, they nullify cancel or neutralize the effect of one another. And the last point you need to recall and remember is that phenolphthalein, a synthetic indicator, is colorless in acidic medium, whereas it imparts pink color in basic medium. For further details on synthetic indicators, kindly refer to the link provided in the description box below. Now let us see how acids and bases react with each other. We already know that they neutralize the effect of one another. And this neutralization can be understood by observing the color change of indicators such as phenolphthalein. Let me explain this with the help of an activity where we will study the neutralization of sodium hydroxide by hydrochloric acid. Remember, both of them have to be in aqueous form, that is, they have to be dissolved in water. For this activity, you are supposed to take a conical flask and add little amount of sodium hydroxide solution. To this solution, you are going to add one to two drops of phenolphthalein. The solution would acquire pink color as phenolphthalein has pink color in basic medium. Then, you are going to fill dilute hydrochloric acid solution in a burette which is a long graduated tube. You can see markings over here. Now, this long graduated tube has a stopcock or stopper at its lower end. Here it is. Let me show you the actual image. This is the burette which you can find in your science laboratory. Now this buret is used for delivering known volumes of a liquid, especially in titrations. Now what are these titrations? These titrations would be the set of experiments which you are going to perform in your higher classes in case you opt for science. Don't worry, for your class level, you can also perform this experiment using test tubes or beakers instead of this conical flask and you can use a dropper instead of buret. Now, you're supposed to add acid drop by drop into the conical flask with constant swirling or stirring the content. You will observe that the pink color slowly lightens and ultimately disappears. You can see it has become colorless. You will stop adding any further acid as the reaction is just complete. The base that is sodium hydroxide has been neutralized by the acid and hence the color changed from pink to colorless. In short, we can say that the complete neutralization of sodium hydroxide solution that is a base by hydrochloric acid solution and vice versa is indicated by a sudden change in the color of the indicator present. In case of phenolphthalein indicator, it was from pink to colorless. Now think what would be the color of this mixture if you added few drops of sodium hydroxide into it. You would observe that the pink color reappear and the intensity of the color would increase with the amount of base added. The more sodium hydroxide you will keep adding, the pink color will become from say light pink to dark pink. Why did this happen? This is because after neutralization, addition of sodium hydroxide turns the solution basic and hence the phenolphthalein shows pink color because I already told you that phenolphthalein imparts pink color in basic medium. So, coming on to the equation involved in this activity, we see that HCl and sodium hydroxide react with each other to produce salt, this is sodium chloride, and water. This reaction is known as neutralization reaction and can be defined as the reaction between an acid and a base 
This is important. Present in aqueous solution to give salt and water as products. As said earlier, these reactions can be understood by observing the color change of the indicator. In this activity, we had used the indicator phenolphthalein. The general representation for such reaction is an acid react with the base to give rise to salt and water as products. If I represent an acid by HX, where X is an anion, now this anion could be a chloride ion, sulfate ion, or nitrate ion, or any other ion, and base as MOH, where M is your metal cation, which could be sodium, potassium, calcium ion. Then when this HX react with MOH, you get MX. Now how this MX or salt is formed? X from acid and M from base. They combine together and you get MX, that is the salt. Now what is remaining? H from acid and OH from base. So hydrogen ion from acid combines with hydroxide ions from base to give rise to HOH. And what is HOH? It is nothing but water. Now, why is this reaction called as neutralization reaction? This is because generally the salt that is formed, here it is, sodium chloride, is found neutral in nature. That is, it won't show any color change with litmus paper or solution, whether your litmus paper is red or blue. I use the word generally because salts in addition to being neutral may be acidic or basic. I'll take this later in a separate video on salts. Taking up some more examples. We see here, sulfuric acids react with sodium hydroxide. So, metal M, that is sodium from here, and anion sulfate from here. They combine together and the resultant salt is sodium sulfate. And H and OH combine together to give rise to water. Children, remember to balance the equation. Similarly, you can see the example of HCl with KOH giving rise to potassium chloride plus water. And hydrochloric acid and calcium hydroxide giving rise to calcium chloride and water. I'm sure you'll be able to answer this question easily which says that what is neutralization reaction give two examples. So this is the definition of neutralization reaction. You can give any two examples. Let us now understand the Arrhenius concept of neutralization. According to Arrhenius theory, neutralization is the combination of H plus ions of an acid with OH negative ions of a base to form unionized water. For better explanation of this Arrhenius concept, I can rewrite the general representation of neutralization reaction, which I explained in my previous slide like this, as H positive X negative ion, that means an acid in water is going to furnish your X positive ion and X negative anion. Similarly, a base represented by MOH in water will furnish M positive ions and OH negative ions. Now in the product you have salt. How is the salt form? X negative from acid combines with M positive from base to give rise to salt. M positive X negative. In this salt you still see that M and X are present in ionized form. Whereas in case of water that is formed in product this X positive ions given by an acid combines with OH negative ions produced by a base to give rise to HOH. See that I did not put any charge on H and OH. This is unionized water. It doesn't contain ion. Or you can write it as H2O. Now how H and OH are bonded to each other, you're going to study later. Let me explain again with the help of an example. HCl combines with NOH to give rise to NaCl plus water. HCl is going to furnish H positive in water plus chloride ions and sodium hydroxide can be similarly split into Na positive and OH negative. Now this chloride ion and this sodium ion are going to combine together to give you salt Na positive Cl negative. It still contains your positive and negative ions and thus is ionic in nature whereas your H positive combined with OH negative ions to give rise to unionized water. I can also say that common Na positive and Cl negative ions. Here you can see this Na positive and Na positive, they are common on both sides. Similarly, this chloride ion and this chloride ions are common on both sides. I can cancel them. So you are left with H positive ions and OH negative ions which are going to combine together 
and produce unionized water. Dear students, kindly note that the neutralization reactions are example of exothermic reaction. That is, heat is evolved or liberated in these reaction. I can add the symbol delta which represent heat in the reaction over here. Let us quickly answer the following multiple choice question based on neutralization reaction which says 10 ml of solution of sodium hydroxide is found to be completely neutralized by 8 ml of a given solution of SCL. If we take 20 ml of same solution of NOH, the amount of SCL solution required to neutralize it will be. So you have 4 choices 4, 8, 12, 16. Since sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric solutions are same in both the cases, you can simply apply unitary method for finding the answer. That is, if 10 ml of NaOH requires 8 ml of HCl, then 20 ml of NaOH would require 8 by 10 into 20, that is 16 ml. So your answer is D. Dear students, Neutralization reactions find a variety of use in our day-to-day -day lives. I will briefly explain some of the applications. For details, kindly refer to my video on importance of pH in everyday life whose link is provided on top as well as in the description box below. The first application of this reaction is in the case of acidity. To neutralize the excess acid that is produced in the stomach and the acids such as milk of magnesia. MgOH whole twice or sodium bicarbonate your meta soda baking soda NaHCO3 or Eno is used. Now the stings of honeybees and ants inject formic acid with formula SCOOH also known as methanoic acid which can be treated by rubbing soap or using baking soda with formula NaCO3 as both are basic in nature. Similarly, in case of wasp sting, an acid such as vinegar, which is a dilute solution of acetic acid, is used, which neutralizes the base injected by the wasp. The same is the case when stung by nettle leaf, which inject an acid which can be neutralized by a base or the leaves of dog plant that grows near this nettle plant and contains a base. Neutralization of excess acidity in the soil can be done by adding a base such as slate lime, that is calcium hydroxide or powdered calcium carbonate which has formula CaCO3 also known as limestone. One of the oral hygiene measures to prevent tooth decay is to brush your teeth with a basic toothpaste which neutralizes the excess acid present in the mouth. With this, I come to the end of this video. Do please give a thumbs up if you like my video. In my next video, I'll take up reaction of metallic and non-metallic oxides with acids and bases respectively. So stay tuned to my channel. Please subscribe to it if you haven't and if you feel this video can help someone perform better, kindly share. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay bonded my dear learners.